So this was a girl's favorite book uh, when they were younger that Mike read. Maybe, can you remember reading this book? <laughs> Lucky Ducky, there you go. <laughs> you not the Kirby Horrors with the <clears throat> Rum Vibulator or something? Well, some of your memory's still there, that's good. Right, right. Can I ever tell you about the 37 the turn up or whatever it is on a guy called? <clears throat> 14 radish. Now, we did cut out some of the unlucky people because it was just a little long. But we'll see if you enjoy this. But you got the drum debulator in there, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You just wait and see. Okay. 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 Boy, you sue people are sure well, bossy. <laughs> I've always known <laughs> When I was quite young and quite small for my size, I met an old man in the desert of Drive. And he sang me a song I will never forget. At least, well, I haven't forgotten it yet. He sat in a terribly prickly place, but he sang with a sunny, sweet smile on his face. When you think things are bad, when you feel sour and blue, when you start to get mad, you should do what I do. Just tell yourself, Dr. It's a troublesome world, all the people who are in it are troubled with troubles almost every minute. You ought to be thankful a whole heap of lot for the places and people you're lucky you're not. Just suppose, for example, you live in Gazate and got caught in that traffic on Zate Highway 8. <laughs> or suppose for just just for an instance, you live in Gazare with your bedroom up here and your bathroom up there. I couldn't have yeah, No scooter bath. <laughs> no, we're work it Suppose to suppose you were poor Herbie Hart, who has taken his thrum dibulator apart. Okay. He never will get it together, I'm sure. He never will know if the gick or the gore fits into the scrucks or the snucks of the snore. Yes, Ducky, you're lucky you're not Herbie Hart, who has taken his thrum dibulator apart. You think they work you too hard? Think of poor Ali Sar. He has to mow grass in his uncle's backyard. And and it's growing quick growing grass. And he grows it. And he grows as he mows it. The faster he mows it, the faster he grows it. And all that his stingy old uncle will pay for his shoving that more around in that hay is the piffless pay of two duplas a day. And Ali can't live on such piffless pay. So he has to paint flake poles on Sundays and grooves. How lucky you are, you don't live in his shoes. And poor Mr. Bix, every morning at six, poor Mr. Bix has his orphan to fix. It just doesn't seem fair, just doesn't seem right. But his orphan just seems to go slump every night. It slumps in a heap, sadly need and repair. Bix figures it's due to the local night air. And it takes him all day to unslump it. And then the night air comes back and it slumps once again. So don't you feel blue, don't get down in the dumps. You're lucky you don't have a birth in that slumps. And poor Mr. Potter, T cross or I daughter. He has to cross T's and he has to dot I's in an I and T factory out in Van Nuys. Is this coming back to you? <laughs> and how fortunate you're not Professor DeBreeze, who has spent the past 32 years, if you believe. Trying to teach Irish ducks how to read Javanese. <clears throat> and think of the poor puffing Pugelhorn players who have to parade down the Pugelhorn stairs every morning to wake up the Prince of Pugelhorn. It's awful how often their Pugels get broken. And oh, just suppose you were poor Harry Haddo. Try as he will, he cannot make a shadow. He thinks that perhaps something's 
wrong with his giz? And I think that, by golly, there probably is. And the brothers bazoo, the poor brothers bazoo, suppose your hair grew like theirs happened to do. You think you're unlucky? I'll tell you, ducky, some people are much like more, ever so much like much more unlucky than you.